Hi, this is Alex. You probably know me as not Sparta from the Wonderground blogs. This is just a test to see how this video format works. Here it goes. First up, dis I'm discussing Invest94L right here. Excuse my drawing. Right now it's relatively anemic looking just south of the Cabo Verde Island. Uh, yeah, it's not doing too well right now. It's in the Eastern Atlantic, usually thermodynamics aren't very good in this part of the world. So convection tends to struggle. And this is exactly what's happening right now. Also, the tropical Atlantic has been generally stable uh, in 2019. But as we can see from Gabrielle and Dorian and Invest 94L, the problem is beginning to get less bad for development. So here we have uh, a recent ASCAP ask, ask pass from about eight this uh, eight o'clock this evening EDT, and well as usual they missed the actual trough. You can see the northeasterly winds here and southerly winds here, and that shows that there is a, some kind of waves in this area. It's estimated to be about here on the uh, National Hurricane Center best track update. So there is something here, but it is likely not organized quite yet. However, uh, here's a ship's intensity forecast. Now, it, uh, you, can, you can see on here that it strengthens 94L pretty quickly, bringing it up to nearly major hurricane strength in only five days. I'd like to, you to ignore that, as it is not very good with non-developed systems, it assumes that's already a tropical cyclone and uh, therefore starts strengthening it when it needs to organize first. Now what I'd like you to look at is these conditions right here. Sorry for my drawing. Yeah, the general conditions so first off, we have shear. The shear is expected to stay generally low on this forecast, which isn't too much of a surprise that since the El Nino event ended a few months ago. Shear has been actually relatively low on the deep tropical Atlantic and sometimes even in the Caribbean, where shear basically ruled a lot in 2019, 2018, sorry. Then next up we have the sea surface temperatures which start off low which is again normal for the east tropical Atlantic but as you can see start to increase towards the end of forecast period which is obviously more favorable for intensification or organization. The increased, the increased lapse right here can allow the, the system to fire in more, off more convection that leads to pressure pressure falls and cyclogenesis. So uh, here's the potential intensity. So if conditions are absolutely perfect, you, this is the maximum intensity that a tropical cyclone can achieve. It can overshoot it a bit if it does, is rapidly intensifying, but this Invest 94L probably won't get here, but it shows that it, the water the area can support a relatively robust hurricane right now. Uh, and next up is the relative humidity. Now that's been a huge problem for the deep tropical Atlantic so far this year. It's been much drier than normal and that has been what caused what, what caused Invest 92 or 93L back in July to struggle and 
fizzle and cause the relative quiet in this region until near the end of August when tropical Hurricane Dorian formed, and even then it struggled a lot with dry air until it reached the subtropics. Now this problem seems to have been much lessened with Invest 94L as the relative humidity is up in the 60s, uh, eventually dropping lower and up to 50, which isn't great, but is better than the conditions that there have been. So this is another favorable indicator that uh, 94L could become strong, potentially. Uh, and I want you to notice the track, too. It gets up to about 15 degrees north and then starts to drop all the way down to about 13 degrees north. This shows that the steering ridge to the north is likely very strong and will allow it to keep south and not recurve out. Now, it's way too early to know what it's going to do if it's going to get shredded in the Caribbean, become strong, where does it go? It's way too early to look at that, but this forecast for the latitude does show you that it has better chance than climatology, the climatological average to get to the Western Atlantic. Also note the heat content rises as you get further into the Western Atlantic. This isn't anything unusual. It, there's usually more heat content as the easterly trades bring warm water to the west. Now, Let's look at Tropical Storm Gabrielle. As you can see, it is highly sheared from the south-southwest. As you can see right here. And some serious clouds coming up from this area. Now there is a well-defined spin right here. Probably see it. But all the convection, if any, is all the way up here. So obviously this is a very sheared system. Uh, also note it's going this way. Well, so slowly from the south southeast, and this this also adds to the shear as the difference between flows means that convection is has a much harder time staying on the center below. Now let's switch over to the water vapor and you can see here that there's a very large area of dry air that's getting entrained into the system right now which is, along with the shear, uh, suppressing the si any convection that tries to form over the low, which means it wouldn't be surprising for the National Hurricane Center to designate this as a post-tropical remnant low as there's no convection firing. So a better idea of the shear is an upper ridge about here. My drawing with Invest 94L currently in the flow and an upper low right here. And both these are coming together to produce a south southwesterly flow, which is cheering a Gabrielle currently. However, as the tropical cyclone starts to rotate around the upper low, it'll start moving more east and the shear vector will become very similar to that of the storm movement, which means shear over the storm gets lower and also by moving into the slightly moister, moister environment, it'll be allowed to uh, 
start buying the convection again, which means it could reform or start st to strengthen. But uh, this system poses no threat to land. It is expected to recurve well east of Bermuda or North America, so it's not something you need, you don't need to be worried about. Let's take a look at S92 well. The chances for this has dropped to near zero, and probably see why. There, an upper ridge from Hurricane Dorian's outflow uh, is currently severe hearing the the system. The previously generally well-defined low right here has become less well-defined as any convection that tries to fire on it because of sheared away. This system has a 10% chance now of development is not expected to form as these upper level conditions will continue until this gets whisked way out to sea, which will keep the lead in development. Let's take a look at Hurricane Dorian right here. You can see that got uh, has a relatively well-defined eye. It's a 100 mile an hour Category 2 hurricane right near the coast of no, Carolina, and it has the potential to make landfall around the Outer Banks. Uh, as it starts to speed up to the northeast, uh, getting pulled away by a passing trough. Uh, this storm is having impacts right in the coast here as the eye wall gets near. And this band here, which this morning was producing tornadoes into eastern, a lot of e the eastern part of uh, North Carolina. So it is currently posing a threat to land, and uh, well, I'm not a meteorologist, so please do not take my make any decisions based on what I say. Always talk to your local official officials or consult the National Hurricane Center for any and all your, your decision making. And that's about it for today. Uh, if you want to give me any feedback, I'd be very happy to make fun of my voice, I guess. Uh, and then teal color. Uh, I like teal. But yeah, I appreciate any feedback if you have any. Uh, so that I can make any future videos better. Thank you.